There's a park that encapsulates the beauty of natural Florida. It draws thousands of birders and is famous for a huge trail crossing gator. This is the Wildlife of Circle Bebar Reserve. This video is divided into four sections. Mammals, reptiles, amphibians, birds, and fish. First order of business are the mammals. Here's a very pregnant wild pig. You're most likely to see these animals on the way into the park. Sometime later, and these piglets are born. Wild pigs destroy natural habitat for native plants with their wallowing and rooting for food. But they sure are cute at this stage. This is a different litter. Make sure to keep some distance. There were rumors of people picking up piglets a while ago to take them closer to the mother. A seemingly innocent act that is dangerous to both the humans and the pigs. Raccoons are a common urban animal, but are still a nice sight to see in the swamp. This one is likely looking for turtle eggs to eat. We'll be back to him in a second. They are good, albeit clumsy, climbers. This one here seems to think he is a squirrel. Look how far up this guy is. What a calm, graceful... Oh, never mind. Raccoons seem to enjoy this alligator alley trail the most. You'll find them here often. Cottontailed rabbit. They breed year round, and a female can have four litters a year, with an average of five babies a litter. A baby rabbit is called a kit. Found closer to the water than the cottontail, the marsh rabbit is a very strong swimmer. They are smaller and darker than the former species mentioned. The acrobatic gray squirrel is the second most common mammal at the beach. However, the most common mammal at the park are the human visitors. Mostly hikers and photographers, but this one is a worker. You'll find plenty of sand mountains on Eagle Goose Trail. These belong to southeastern pocket gophers. A single gopher tunnel can extend 150 meters. Nicknamed armored pigs, the nine-banded armadillos are found digging for food at cooler times of the day. They have a great sense of smell, but have horrible eyesight and hearing. onto the reptiles and amphibians of the park. Perhaps what Circle B is most known for is their huge gator video that went viral years ago. On a good day, you'll find dozens of gators.
This guy is of huge size, magnificent, but perhaps a little bit lazy, also. An alligator's bite measures up to 2,125 pounds PSI of force. This is the famous gator, nicknamed Humpback. I was very lucky to see him crossing in person. He made the park much more popular. You could call him the star attraction. Here's another encounter. For reference, that trail is about 8 feet wide. So I'd say this one's about 10 feet. This one is a humpback in the making. The brown water snake is a large growing serpent often mistaken for the venomous cottonmouth. They have a blotched pattern and a python-like head. They are the most common water snake in the park. The largest water snake in North America is the green water snake. This one had to be at least 5 feet long. These snakes give birth to live young, not eggs, and they can have a litter as large as 100. They sport a very pretty pattern. The banded water snake varies in color. Here's an example of how bright they can be contrasted to the previous dark ones. When you see a very bright snake in the moss-filled trees of the park, it is likely to be a yellow rat snake. Although they are called rat snakes, they are much fonder of any bird eggs they can find. I think tree snake would be a much better term. A species close to that of a garter snake, the ribbon snake is a cute, spastic serpent that is about the width of a pencil. If you see a snake at your home, odds are it's a southern black racer. They are common at about any place you could go and are common here. Make sure to watch your step. This tiny ringneck snake only grows to about a foot in length. This one is young, so it's only a few inches. There are many different species of turtles at the beach. The ones featured on the video now are cooters. There are peninsula cooters and red-bellied cooters. The red-bellied can be determined by the red markings on the top of their shells. This one is an example. I don't have it on tape, but I have seen an invasive red-eared slider here. Here's another red-bellied. Turtle eggs are laid all over the place here. This is one of the few egg sites I've seen that weren't already eaten by raccoons or another animal. This beautiful guy is a Florida softshell turtle. Their long necks may be mistaken for snakes at first in the water. They grow large, given enough time, and they can live longer than 20 years in the wild. 
They can move quite fast in the water and can move quickly, even on land sometimes. This guy is taking his time, trying to maneuver his way away from me. It's hard to believe something a little larger than a silver dollar can grow as large as what we just previously seen. The common snapping turtle is on the rarer side of turtles you can find at Circle B. They can live past 30 years in the wild. This is a large one, it is far from water, and possibly looking to make a nest. Three-lined mud turtles are some of the smallest turtles on Earth, growing to about 5 inches. But the musk turtle here is even smaller. Their hatchlings are literally the size of pennies. Green anoles are abundant in the park. They can change color from green to brown. This is an adult five-lined skink. A strange find one day was when this skink crossed paths with a Cuban brown anole. The brown anole wasn't having it. Believe it or not, this is a lizard, not a snake. It is known as the Eastern Glass Lizard. It can be found on Eagle Roost, along with this fast race runner lizard. There really aren't many amphibians here, but there are some frogs. This is a leopard frog, always close to the water. If you go to the park's vending machine, there are often green tree frogs enjoying the condensation. A strange thing is these frogs don't drink water, they absorb it through their skin. I found 10 to 12 at one time. Likely what the park's visitors search for the most are the birds. To start it off, here is a baby barred owl with one of its parents. I have seen it since he hadn't even left his tree cavity that he was laid in. Here is him, a bit older, enjoying a caterpillar. I have really enjoyed seeing him grow up. He is quite comfortable with humans. I was only five feet away from him during this shot. These are some much less known young sibling barred owls that I found on the Alligator Alley Trail. I was surprised to find them. Nothing was posted on the Circle B Facebook group about them. They must usually be farther back into the woods and marshes. A Great Horned Owl. The red-shouldered hawk is extremely common. You'll hear their trademark screech a dozen times on one hike. Fun fact, when you hear what is supposed to be a bald eagle in a movie, it is usually often the call of a hawk. Here are some young ones in a nest. They were far off in Alligator Alley. You can find this bald eagle's nest on Eagle Roost Trail. Surprising, I know. Most birds stay with their mating partners. Eagles are no exception. This is a young one who has not developed the bald spot.
Here is a short glimpse of the southeastern American kestrel. The osprey's vision is incredibly well adapted. They can spot underwater meals while they are 100 feet in the air. Here are some nice black vultures cleaning up the path. Like all things, they have a big role in the ecosystem. Black vultures have an inferior sense of smell compared to turkey vultures, and they often follow them in order to find food. Here is one of those turkey vultures. He can smell carrion up to a mile away. This is a fantastic ability in the bird world, which most species don't have a great sense of smell. The great blue heron is the largest heron in North America. They also have a tremendous appetite, as you can see with this one and his large mudfish. The great heron is basically just like the last, except nature forgot to color it. These next two are very similar in build, but vary in color. This is a little blue heron, and this is the tricolored heron. Herons in general are recognized by their long legs and S-shaped neck. Green herons are much different, and a rarer sight at the bee than the rest. A lone snowy egret, a nice bird, but far more interesting when interacting with a group. You might call these cattle birds, but the name of this guy is a white ibis. The Anhinga bird is a funny one. It is always cool to see them with their comically large prey. The double-crested cormorant is a similar species, but much less common. They will live besides both fresh and saltwater bodies. Limpkins are cute water birds often seen eating snails. These are babies. I've always looked at birds and reptiles as modern dinosaurs, but these spoonbill birds truly look like something ancient. Look at that bill. This wood stork must be full time with all these numerous baby animals sighted at the Circle B. The most solid red eyes I've ever seen on a bird. Black-crowned night herons typically forage on their own. This common gallinule has some very alien-looking chicks. Here is a very similar species, but much prettier a purple gallinule. Blue-winged teal ducks. Black-bellied whistling ducks sound like literal squeaky toys when they fly above you. I had once seen a pair with 13 ducklings. To begin with the smaller bird species, what better way to begin than with the painted bunting? A migratory bird, it is a hard find, but when it's around you will know, with its loud flapping and vibrant colors. These Carolina wrens are really enjoying a dirt bath on Alligator Alley. A house wren. A common ground dove. A dove you're more likely to see here is the morning dove. the cardinal, a 
and a female cardinal. I'll give you a hint to what this one is. I named him Atticus Finch. The red-winged blackbird with its very distinctive call. A group of crows. There's a fire bush at the parking lot. You can grab a foldable chair and wait for a hummingbird like this one. Chimney swifts can be seen often far away at Eagle Roost Trail. The first of multiple woodpecker species at the bee. A large bird, the pelated woodpecker is very cartoon looking and can do quite some damage to trees. A common sight here. Red-bellied woodpecker. They love making habitats in palm trees, as do other woodpeckers. The downy woodpecker is less common. This one is female. And this one with the red is a male. A blue-gray gnat catcher with a tree. A fun thing is, as I was looking at the video of these gnat catchers, I found out I recorded a species unknowingly. Not great quality, but this is a tufted titmouse. You can see its defining features in even this fuzzy picture. A palm warbler near the Discovery Center. A short glimpse of a very bright prairie warbler. The common yellowthroat warbler. 113 species of warblers occur in the Americas. Wild turkeys can sometimes be found at the Shady Oaks Trail. I had to save the best bird for last. Here are sandhill cranes and their beautiful chick. Baby sandhill cranes are called colts, like male horses. This colt reminds me very much of those running dinosaurs in the first Jurassic Park, the Gallimimuses. Sandhill cranes, like many other birds, mate for life. Seeing such big birds in flight is really something. Here are some fish you may see. A couple of tilapia. Catfish being pulled into a stream. Minnows. A garfish. And finally, plecofish. fish.